Hey guys, welcome to another Leak Code video. In this video, I solve Leak Code number two, add two numbers. So before I actually start coding, uh, I actually want to take the examples given in the problem and kind of just work through them. Uh, this way, later on, you'll see how intuitive the, uh, the code actually becomes. First of all, I want to establish a convention, which is for the carryovers, uh, which I'm going to call C. But the carryover will have two subscripts throughout the process, which is C underscore B and C underscore A. C underscore B refers to the state of the carryover before something was done to it uh, during an iteration. And C underscore A refers to the carryover after something was done to it during each iteration. So it's the same variable, but they just take different states. So let's direct our attention over to the first example from the prompt, where L1 is 243 and L2 is 564. So to start out, we can add the corresponding numbers in each array. So that's 7. And then we init our carryover, which is actually carryover before, we haven't really done anything to the carryover during this step. And that's zero, right? We, then we add the carryover, which is seven. Seven plus zero is still seven. Then we ask, is seven greater than or equal to 10? It's not. That means carryover after is zero. And your value at uh, this place is seven. Let's go to the second one. So the carryover after for the previous step now becomes the carryover before for the next step. We add the two numbers, 10. 10 plus zero is 10. We ask, is 10 greater than or equal to 10? It is. Carryover after is now 1. Well, but what we use here is the mod of 10. So we got 10 here. We use 10 mod 10, and that is 0. Next iteration, same thing. Three plus four equals seven plus the carryover of one, which is eight. We ask, is eight greater than or equal to 10? It's not. Use eight. So now you get the correct answer of 708. Okay, so keeping what we just did in mind, let's actually go through the second example, or actually example three. Let's see, L1 was 9999999. Nine, Nine. All right, so looks like seven nines. L two is nine, 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 nine. 
Okay, so let's sum them. So 18, 18, 18, 18, 9, 9, 9. Carry over before is zero. Eighteen plus zero equals eighteen. Is eighteen greater than or equal to ten? Yes. We said carry over after to one because that was that was true. Then we do 18 mod 10, which gives us 8. So the final answer is 8. Second one, plus 1, because the carryover before, which came from the carryover after the previous step, is 1. That's 19. Now, is 19 greater than or equal to 10? Yes. Carry over after is 1. Then to get our final number, we do 19 9. So our final value here is 9. Carry over after becomes carry over before is nineteen. Nineteen same as last one. I just want to move this over just a little bit. Same process as before. Now is ten greater than equal to ten? Yes. Carry over after is one. Ten. Ten mod ten is zero. So we get zero. That's ten. 10 is greater than or equal to 10. So that means the carryover is set to 1 now. 10 mod 10 is 0. That's 10. 10 is greater than or equal to 10 carry over is 1, and then 10 mod 10 equals 0, so that's 0. But now, the last step here, notice our carry over is 1 after we've gone to the last iteration. We just need to add a check 
for the carryover. C, or C, I'm just gonna write C because um, it's one. Right, our after stay for the uh, for the last iteration was one. That's it. So that's how we get the right answer. So now all we need to do is turn that same process that we just used to work through those examples into code. I'm going to initialize my carryover to zero, just like what we were doing on pen and paper. Set P1 to L1, and then I'm going to declare P2 and set that to L2. And then the output is going to remain in a new linked list. So I'm going to use L3 head to point to the head of the third linked list, the output. Set that to none. So to account for the possible uh the possibility that the two input lists are different lengths i will write p1 non or p2 non so this way if it hasn't gone to the both of uh, the ends of both of the lists it will keep on iterating uh, i'm going to declare a variable for the sum and then And the else case is just the reverse of the else if. Remember, we added the carry to the sum. So we should do that here too. I'm going to declare a variable called place value that will stand for the value actually being put in the output linked list. So now is our question we ask, is it greater than or equal to 10? If it is, we set carry to one place value equals p1, p2, mod 10. Else, set carry to zero, and then place value is just the sum itself. So in our loop, we need to check if L3 actually exists. So we say if L3 head is none, then create it. We set P3 to the head. Otherwise, we just well, from the previous iteration, if you get an else, then that means the header exists and P3 is pointing to it. So that means you just set P3.next to to a new node. And uh, in the end, remember we did a final check for the carryover? We should do that too here. Indentation. 
So if theory equals one, then p3 dot max equals list node placed value. Otherwise, no need to do anything. And lastly, we just return l3 dot head. And let's give it a try. Ah, uh, I made a mistake here. We're supposed to add the carryover, not place value. Okay, so all test cases were accepted, and let's submit. And it was accepted. Now a final word on the time and space complexity. So remember we have L1 and L2, right? And we have a while loop. The maximum iterations of that while loop is determined by whichever list has a greater amount of numbers. So we can say, uh, let's call it n equals length of L1, and then m equals the uh, length of L, uh, L2. So your time complexity would then be the max of whichever one is greater. For space complexity, we are returning L3, right? We're returning another linked list, so we need to store the numbers, which is determined by the maximum of L1 and L2. And we have the carryover, but that's just O of one. Right, we're, we're just storing one number there. So that means our space complexity is actually the same. So that's it. Uh, that's lead code question two. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. See you in the next one.